Well, greetings from Las Vegas and welcome to week 12 of the pro football season. Grab those stretchy pants, heat up some leftovers and hang out with us for the next 30 minutes. Beat the odds starts right now. From our Las Vegas studios, this is Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Well, hey there, welcome inside our Las Vegas studio. I'm Dave Hall. And I'm Mariah Janos. I wish we could do the show in stretchy pants. Yeah. Everything oh. is a little more snug after <laughs> Turkey Day. It's about the fifth plate that got me. What about you? Yeah, I'm right there with you. It's yeah. just nonstop. Just keep eating. All right, well, we're going to grind through. It's time to get back to work. Yeah, we're looking for some Black Friday deals. Jack and Teddy will have their football betting bargains. All right, also coming up, we are talking MVP. See which player has long odds, but a good shot to win it. Plus, Jack finally lost his best bet. He and uh, Teddy will try to start a new winning streak today. And I'm looking at players fans should be thankful for this holiday season while Brandon Marshall is back to talk about which teams are cooked and which could use a little more time in the oven. I'm hungry again. Dave, <laughs> take it away. Serve up that sixth plate. Thanks, Mariah. All right, boys. How happy, you doing? Happy, happy, Easter, happy Easter, right? Happy Easter. Well, that's what you're dressed for. Yeah, I for. took it out for Easter. I yeah. think that's next. So. As usual, right on point. <laughs> Teddy, how are you? I'm full. You're full? I think we all are. Full of uh, full of food, but not yet full of football. We got another uh, big slate coming up on Sunday and Monday. Before we dive into games this weekend, though, uh, you guys wanted to talk about something very odd that happened in the betting world last week. What was it? Oh, sure did. Last week, one of the rarest and uniquest Sundays you're ever going to find in week 11. Four games, not one, not two, not three, four different games landed in the middle between the opening point spread and a closing point spread. And what that means is that if you bet them right, didn't matter which side you had, you were able to cash a winning bet. Of course, that's what a middle is when a game lands in between the opening and the closing point spread. We had Houston. Yeah, they were won by five over Arizona. That line bounced between four and six. We had Cleveland winning by exactly three against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh opened plus four, and then the quarterback news came out, and let, next thing you know, it was a pick em game, and then it got bet up. So the books got buried on both sides of that game. San Fran, Tampa Bay opened 11 and a half, closed 13 and a half, lands right on 13, mm -hmm. and LA. Against Seattle, they're a one-point dog. They're a two-point favorite. They end up winning by one, landing right in the middle. I've been in Vegas for 26 football seasons. I've never seen a Sunday with four different middles hitting and legit middles. That's bad for the house. Yeah, and there's something to learn from that. I mean, it's not just about what happened last week and that anomaly. It, and another way of putting that, if you like the favorite, you should have bet it when the number was lower. And if you like the underdog, you should be being a good steward of your line and being able to bet it late enough or early enough to get the better number. It's, it, it goes back to that reminder that we need to not chase numbers. So you do take a little responsibility as a player when you're betting these games to get the best line. Uh, and sometimes that comes early, sometimes it comes late. Get that question a lot. Mm -hmm. but and another thing that happened this last week, we've been talking about double-digit favorites. Similar thing with them. If you bet them early, this is, makes it even simpler. If you bet those double-digit favorites early, you've done much better than if you've waited until the general public piles on to the better team. So just a good reminder that you are a steward of your money. Uh, take a little responsibility and get in a better line. I mean, you guys have so much experience doing this. Is, is there any way to know? Is it better to bet early in the week or later in the week? Is there Are there tips? Are there clues? Well, we spend a lot lot of times when it comes to handicapping skills we talk about mm -hmm. handicapping the games we break down the games betting skills are something that we try to focus on but really experience matters the longer you do this the more adept you'll get at finding the opportunities to be able to cash either side of a game regardless of which side you play general rule favorite early underdog later because the general public likes to play favorites and if they get desperate they'll play that it moves the number away from the better number. That's just general though a lot of times you'll need to yeah. do the opposite. Just put a little effort into it. It will make you a little more money over the year. Now since you're in the middle what does that mean for us? It means I'm a frontline winner last week at least five or six times right? <laughs> you got a fat jack sandwich going here. Let's win. Wow. <laughs> just what we wanted right? The leftovers of a fat jack sandwich. <laughs> on that note let's move on to Mariah. One of the big storylines this season Season is all the quarterback injuries Joe Burrow being the latest guy to go down Mariah is at the Superbook Westgate Las Vegas she was there earlier this week with more on that 
Thanks, Dave. I'm here with EVP of Superbook Operations, Mr. Jay Cornegay. Jay, I hate to start off on a sour note, but some news over the weekend. Joe Burrow is officially out for the remainder of the season. Not great for Cincinnati, especially we all anticipated for them to get better as the season went on and make that playoff push. Now it's not looking so good. How does this affect the futures? What's this shakeup look like? Very unfortunate for Cincinnati. They were looking like the best team in the league just a couple weeks ago uh, after a loss and finding out their starting quarterback is gone for the year. The odds changed from 10 to 1. Now we have them at 200 to 1. So a big long shot in Cincinnati now. And it is Thanksgiving week. A lot of games to be played. A lot of eyes on those games. How does that impact here at the book? Unfortunately for bookmakers this year, we have three prohibited favorites. We got uh, teams seven, seven and a half, eleven point favorites on Thanksgiving. These are high volume games. I mean, they get so much more action on Thursday than they would on Sunday. So we expect high volume, a lot of action on those favorites. Now, as you mentioned, those Thanksgiving games, large spreads. Then on Friday, that Black Friday game, also a heavy favorite in that as well. When you see spreads that large, what's the immediate reaction? So our first Black Friday game, and we got Miami over New York. And again, Miami, another big favorite. So we had three big favorites on Thursday, another big favorite on Friday. As a bookmaker, we kind of cringe a little bit because we're going to need some underdogs, uh, at least one or two of those to cover and maybe even one to win outright. So uh, that's not a favorable schedule for the bookmakers, but we'll get through it. All right, Jay, thank you so much. Dave, we'll send it back to you in studio. All right, thanks to you too. Up next, we're going to go Black Friday shopping. And don't worry, you have to fight someone over the 65 inch TV. The boys will have some deals in the world of football betting. Plus, Brandon Marshall joins us. He's talking birds and which football birds are still juicy and which ones are now overcooked. Before we take our first time out with three passing touchdowns in week 11, Buffalo quarterback Josh Allen set the record for most combined touchdowns in a player's first six seasons. Who did he surpass? The answer after the break. Beat the Odds is sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas. Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you with three passing touchdowns in week 11, Buffalo quarterback Josh Allen set the record for most combined touchdowns in a player's first six seasons. Who did he surpass? The answer, Patrick Mahomes, who had just 204. It should be noted, though, Mahomes played just one game during his rookie season in 2017. Hey, by the way, Mariah, Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City will be here playing in Allegiant Stadium this Sunday against Vegas. Maybe someone on his team will catch the ball this week. Scan that QR code on your screen. It takes you to our website, BeatTheOddsTV.com. Yes, I'm a very bitter Kansas City fan. All right, we're back with the champ, Brandon Marshall. Good to see you again, Brandon. Uh, speaking of, KC and LA, I want to start there. Uh, those two teams had absolutely brutal drops that cost them wins as a teammate when you have one of your teammates go through something like that you may want to strangle the guy but how do you approach that I'm curious well a lot of times you know it probably really depends on who it is and how they've done throughout the season fair enough you know the type of friend he is because <laughs> sometimes you want to look at him crazy but then sometimes you may want to just you know hey it, it's gonna be okay you right know, it's gonna be all right but at the end of the day the drops to lose the football game, mm -hmm. right? When your season's on the break, especially for LA, yeah. right? That is very disheartening. It kind of makes you look at somebody like, hmm, you right. might not be here for very long. Yeah, especially them, because they don't have much room, much wiggle room at all. All right, I want to play a little game with you. You ready for this? Let's do it. Uh, in honor of Turkey Day, there okay. are five uh, teams okay. named after birds. All right. So I want to ask you, are these birds perfectly cooked, mm -hmm. or are they overdone and burnt and over with? Okay. So let's start with that team in Seattle well uh, the team in Seattle I would say you know especially with their loss you know uh, against LA mm -hmm. they are more on the overdone side that turkey is a little dry because right. when you look when you look at their schedule coming up right they have uh, San Fran twice they have Dallas Yeesh. they have a tough schedule coming up a gauntlet coming up mm -hmm. and it's like okay they needed that win especially in NFC play to help them out so they're a little more on the overdone side. All right, maybe don't throw it out completely, but mm -hmm. we're getting there. Uh, this one's probably easy, Baltimore. 
Oh, Baltimore, oh, they're perfectly cooked. That that turkey is juicy. You know, I mean, it's, it's nice. It's probably a fried turkey, if I'm being honest with you. And the oh. thing is, right, you know, with, with Joe Burrow out in yeah. Cincinnati, you know, Deshaun Watson out in Cleveland, they're primed to be really nice in their division and, and maybe potentially play for the number one seed. All right, I'm curious your thoughts on this one. The Dirty Birds of Atlanta. The Dirty Birds in Atlanta, they are cooked. All right, that, that, <laughs> that bird is done. They don't even have a quarterback. They're not sure what they're doing as far as. Yeah, uh, they're going back to Ritter now. You know, the key, yeah. Ritter, you know, I mean, now granted, their schedule isn't that bad. You know, their schedule isn't that bad, and the division isn't that tough. But at the end right. of the day, I don't see anything that Atlanta can do. All right, real quick, these last two. This one's easy. Philly. Oh, yeah. No, Philly is juicy. That's a nice turkey, fried turkey. <laughs> and finally, <laughs> Arizona. Kyler Murray's back. He's looked pretty good. Oh, he's looked good, you know. Yeah. I mean, they're still cooked, right? It's a burnt turkey, right? They're cooked. W will they try to get Caleb Williams? I don't know about all that, but, you know, that could help the turkey become a little more juicy next year, the next couple years, but that turkey is done. All right, now we're all hungry. Thank you, Brandon, <laughs> for your turkey analysis and your football analysis. Uh, I'm told Fat Jack is channeling Cindy Lopper for this segment. Uh, can't wait to hear about this. Jack, the floor is yours. Yeah, I want to talk about uh, – all the female officials in uh, professional sport. No, that's not right. Girls do want to have fun, but no, I want to talk about true colors and some of these teams, how they will tell you exactly who they are. And we can listen to that this time of year and make some money from that because some of the information you get, you need to be contrarian, other times not so much. Carolina and Tennessee, along with New England and the G-Men, all of these teams, they have shown us exactly what they are. Let's start with Carolina and Tennessee. Carolina under the total for their last five games. These teams are not scoring points. Under four of the last six in the series. And Tennessee, look at that, guys, on a 11-3 and three run to the under. Bottom line, conservative play calling, bad play at quarterback, and basically not wanting to make mistakes is the name of the game for these teams. We can take advantage of that by going under the total. New England and the G-Men, very similar. Similar. You've got Belichick. He's not going to open up the offense. You see all the volatility, all the smoke coming on on their sidelines. Expect these games to go under. New England, seven of their last nine games have gone under. G-Men, four of their last five have gone under at home. No way to get offense unless they get really, really short fields and the defenses are not quite that good. So let's go under in both those games. Whew. To our friends watching on the Yes Network, woof. If I you got to watch it. that game. Yeah. Oh, man. All right, Teddy, you're doing some Black Friday shopping for us. Sure, deals. I'm looking forward to that game first. But <laughs> why? I'll tell you why. Oh, okay. But you got to stick around <laughs> until best bets at the end of the show. All right. I want to talk about Black Friday bargains. Obviously, everyone's looking for a bargain at this time of year. And when you're looking for a bargain when it comes to pro football teams, you want to ride teams when they're going from bottom feeder to good. Look at Detroit, the prime class example in recent seasons. Detroit. They went 3-12 in 2019. They went 5-11 in 2020. They went 3-13 in 21, a bad team. They started last year 1-6. Since that time, 16-4 against the spread in their last 20 games. They're not going to be 16-4 in their next 20, but if you were able to ride Detroit and Dan Campbell, you made a whole bunch of money. So what team can we look at that might be like Detroit moving forward? Well, Houston right now has that potential. The Mecca Ryans, C.J. Stroud, and you're chewing for Rookie of the Year. This is a team that was 4-12 in 2020. They were 4-13 in 2021. They were 3-13-1 last year. And all of a sudden, they've gotten good. So 6-2 straight up, 5-3 ATS, their last eight. I think there's potential with Houston moving forward. So very distinct ways to look at finding winners. One of them, we're trying to be contrarian. What wasn't going well will go well or vice versa. The other one, let's take the information we've seen to make money on that. So they're different, but they're two distinct ways that will lead us to some wins. Just like you two. Right? <laughs> two very distinct people. We're hitting both ends of the spectrum. And hang tight, fellas. It's about time for our Player Prop Showdown. Today, the boys will deba debate the MVP race and one guy who's going to have these two guys fighting like cats and dogs. See who that is now. Next. Before we take another break, with a touchdown in Week 11, San Francisco running back Christian McCaffrey has now scored 24 touchdowns in his first 21 games with San Fran. Who is the only other player with more touchdowns through 21 games with their new team? The answer after the break. You're watching Beat the Odds, sponsored by Superbook Westgate Las Vegas.
Welcome back. Before the break, we asked you who is the only other player with more touchdowns through their first 21 games with a new team than Christian McCaffrey. The answer, Randy Moss, who scored 25 times in his first 21 games with New England. The holidays are a time to give thanks, and I think I speak for everyone on this show, we are so thankful for the game of football. Sometimes we get wrapped up in our team's records that we fail to acknowledge the silver linings. So let's get into what fan bases should be th thankful for this holiday season. Starting on the West Coast in Los Angeles, a kid we've talked about on this show before, Puka Nakua. Prior to Cooper Cup's return, Nakua had 39 receptions for 501 yards on 52 targets. Once Cup returned, naturally that production level declined but look what just happened cup got injured in Sunday's game against Seattle and Puka returned to his former glory quite quickly fans should be thankful for having this high caliber talent in the depth chart to make cups absence really go unnoticed heading to Washington despite a four and seven record in a poor week 11 performance they have a quarterback with a lot of potential Sam Howell throwing for 3338 yards so far this season the North Carolina product has a big arm he's mobile and he can execute eyebrow raising throws into tight coverage to move the chains. So Washington fans, things really could be worse. A prime example, New England. Now we can't talk about gratitude without talking about the rookie that's turning around an organization that's been the clown show of the league the past few seasons. Houston fans make room at the table for CJ Stroud, whose MVP odds continue to shorten by the way. Anyone who responds to throwing three picks by saying, man, Steph Curry don't ever stop shooting, is someone who appreciates the God-given talent they have and he does not intend on wasting it. Houston, we do not have a problem. And rounding out the list, offensive linemen are the unsung heroes of this league. We all want to praise the quarterbacks and the skill positions, but everyone knows the anchor of the offense is the center position. And I'm looking at the guy that has put O lineman on the map, just like Taylor Swift put his brother on the map, Jason Kelsey. He's a humble man with a lot of talent. Monday night, his 149th consecutive regular season start the most in Philly history, and the conductor behind the brotherly shove that gets so much intention. He's the embodiment of a game changer. So fans, as we all sit on the couch in our food comas and throw on the games, let's remember to give thanks for those who make our favorite teams watchable this holiday and football season. Well, these guys haven't seen a gym since football players wore leather helmets, but no matter, it's Teddy against Jack in our player prop showdown. Today, the boys will debate the MVP race and specifically Christian McCaffrey. Who wants to start? Let me go. I want to start with Christian McCaffrey because you can get Christian McCaffrey right now at 20 to 1 or better. And the only reason that you can get McCaffrey at 20 to 1 right now is because this is supposed to be an award that often goes to quarterbacks. The last 10 years, it's gone to QBs. That said, Adrian Peterson won it 10 years ago, and there have been plenty of running backs that have won the MVP throughout history. McCaffrey leads the league in rushing yards. He's on TV a bunch, and he's on the best team. He's live at 20 to 1, Jack. Yeah, unless they're going to put him at quarterback, I don't think he has any chance in the world. This has become about quarterbacks, and I will give you one. How about Dak Prescott on a Dallas, Cow Dallas team that is really, really coming along at the right time? So I'll take Prescott at 15 to 1 because he plays quarterback. Yeah, but Prescott's not going to win it. McCaffrey is. Well, only one player wins it, but it's normally a quarterback. So I think we're going to go there until huh. further notice. So it, they'll put the option in. I'm going to send you two to your rooms. <laughs> and what about Tyreek Hill? How about some love for Tyreek? Uh, Jack, you finally lost a best bet. Miami and Tyreek Hill <laughs> burned it last week, but he's still a scorching hot 9-2 and two on the season. Up next, see who these guys like to cash this week. Hey, welcome back to Beat the Odds. You know, I'm glad we're showing that football because Jack claims that he can, in fact, kick a 29-yard field goal. We talked about it on the show last week. And next week on the show, we want video proof of this, Jack. Have, I can and I will, and you will have video. Okay. No questions asked. You can still do it. With I did it the other day. Two days ago, I'm going to do it again on video, and I'm going to cupcake at the same time. It's going to be great. Well, he's practicing. <laughs> he's practicing ahead of time. I wanted to you know, have to come off the bench and kick a 29-yard. That's right. Yards. Yeah. Just like they do for real. A bar was here. Now it goes to here. Is that how we're going to do it? We're going to keep raising it? <laughs> we can move you back we need 10 yards. Yarder, Jack. I mean, no time. <laughs>
Okay. 29. It's 29 your ceiling. No, no, I have a lot more range. I was trying not to pull something when I was practicing. Okay, so we'll start it at the 40. If he's on crutches next week, we'll all know oh, I why. will be on crutches. So. <laughs> all right, well, let's get to the best bets. Teddy, why don't you get us started today? So uh, this one is, uh, in my mind, a no-brainer. All right. There's a team laying more than a field goal that has two wins. That team is New England. And they have two wins. And yes, both wins came by less than a touchdown, but more than a field goal. So I'll give them credit for that. But two win teams can't be laying three and a half points on the road. They shouldn't be laying three and a half points at all. And let's say this for the G-men. Their defense hasn't quit, and the offense found a way to throw the ball all over the field last week despite all the sacks that Tommy DeVito took. Mac Jones, Bailey Zappi, doesn't matter. No way. <laughs> Too many points. Give me the G-Man plus in New Jersey. Well, I love our yes viewers, but the words New York and no-brainer in the same. <laughs> I'm excited for them to win. I, that would be a good pick. Um, I'm going to play the same thing I did last week, basically, and lost. That's kind of glutton, glutton for punishment I am. Um, last week I had Miami against Las Vegas because mm -hmm. Las Vegas can't score, has a good defense. I like Miami and the under at least Miami, that was, of course, a loser, but like the under as well. So we're going to go on similar situation here, but I also get less offense out of Kansas City, who in the second half this year, guys, is on a 10-0 run. They average less than five points, uh, five and a half points per game in the second half, zero this last week. Last um, three weeks. Yeah, not scoring in the second half, yeah. loss of identity on offense, and Las Vegas defense is for real. That mm -hmm. change at the top has really helped that side of the ball go under the total. You can see all the stats, but under the total, very few points out here in the desert, uh, Kansas City, Las Vegas under. Three, Mariah, three weeks in a row, Casey hasn't scored in the second half. There have been four teams that won the big game that had three weeks in a row they didn't score in the second half of the game. Don't put that out there. Just saying. I don't want to see it. Sorry, Dave. Mariah, you against Jack, field goal kicking contest, who wins? Oh, oh please geez. say you. We will. This will be a whole 30 Should minutes we, to ourselves. We'll put it on the. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, let's let's absolutely it do it. Field trip. I'm we're taking, taking it. I'm taking you. We're going. Such a bad idea. I'm telling you. I'm in my wheelhouse we're here. We're going to the field <laughs> next show.